So what's going on y'all? Thanks for checking out Beach Bum Living. I'm ready to finish this project off. And if you haven't seen how I even got to this point, please click on the link right here and you can go see what I did to get to this point with the waves and everything. But like I mentioned in the last video, I was having a hard time trying to decide on how I wanted to finish this project off. There was a lot of different options from leaving it just like it is, to adding stain, to putting paint on it, to just different things. And they would all look good in their own way. And so that's, I think that's kind of why I had a difficult time trying to decide. But the overall concept I'm going with, since it does have this wavy pattern and it looks like water, I want to use blue as the color. and and create a gradient as it goes up. I want like a dark blue at the bottom and get lighter as it goes up. So almost probably just a white at the top. All right, so here's my setup. I have my containers ready, some water, and here's my paints. I'm just using craft paint on this because I'm not, I'm not gonna need a whole lot of paint. It's just gonna take a little bit with, you know, it's, just, it's gonna be so watered down and then I'm just spreading it on thinly. So I don't need a lot of paint. This is probably the cheapest possible option you can have on painting things because I think these are on sale for maybe 99 cents. So 99 cents for each, each different color. And to make things really easy, they already have it kind of in a gradient for you. I mean, it's just like this on the shelf where it's a darker blue, a little bit lighter and even lighter than that. So you don't have to worry about buying like a base blue and then mixing white with it, trying to tint it as you go along. It just is already set up for you. So the, for the fourth paint, what I plan on doing, since it didn't have the next step, I just will mix white with this one to make it a little bit lighter and go from there. So I've watered the paint down a lot and I think it's to the consistency that I want. I won't actually know until I test it out whether it's too thick or too thin, but I'll do that in just a second. These three first three colors were just straight out of the bottle with water added. This third one is the one where I needed to mix. So I just mainly used white, added a little bit of this blue from this color. And I think it's a pretty good step off from that color to that color. So I want to test it out on this scrap piece of wood that's just like that's on the dresser. And I'm gonna test out a few things because I haven't decided whether I want to just do the color on the face and leave this natural or just carry it all the way over. And I also wanna test out how I want to apply it because I have a rag where I can do it, dip it in and just do it just like a stain or I have a sponge brush or a regular brush and just kind of dry brush it on. So I'm gonna test all three of those out. All right, so I'm done testing out the colors and I'm happy with the actual colors as far as the tints go, going from dark to light. So that was, that part's good. And as far as the technique to apply it, this was with the rag, this was a sponge brush. There wasn't much difference in those. It pretty, it put it on pretty heavy and, and the coverage was pretty, I wouldn't say thick, but it just kind of was real consistent on how it put it on. So it, it looks real uniform. And then this is with the dry brush. And I think I like that look where it's just, there's some wood still exposed and there's still some of that color on there. So I'm gonna start with that because the thing is, I could start with that, and if for some reason I change my mind and I don't like the way it's looking on the dresser, I can easy, I can easily go back and fill in with like the sponge brush and just add it and make it a little bit more uniform. All right, as far as the colors go, I'm just gonna make things easy. I have four drawers, so as each drawer ends, for instance, this bottom drawer is gonna have the dark blue from the base up to right here, and then it's gonna switch over to the next color. So I just finished putting that first layer on and it's looking okay. It still needs a little bit of tweaking. It's uh, It doesn't look still finished to me. There, there's a couple things I need to change. Is the tops of these waves, you can't really see it because you're looking at the face, but the tops have a lot of it extended out. What I think I want to do is take the paint not watered down and just paint that. So it, it almost will create another layer of depth, depth, depth because this will be the lighter color with it a little bit faded and then there's the darkness. So there's just a, I want more texture. Even though there's a lot of texture already, I just want a little bit more. All 
All right, so I'm done applying the paints and kind of tinkering and messing with it because I was trying to just get a good transition from dark to light. So I brought in even a darker blue and kind of just dry brushed it on there. And then my next step was going to be to paint the tops of these. Well, using that darker blue gave me the idea of painted the top of this with the darker blue. And then on the next section, I used the blue that was on the faces of this section on the tops of that and then just carried on in that pattern. And what it did was just kind of give the overall piece a more cohesiveness where it wasn't these uh, drastic changes where it was just like just this color and then just this color. It kind of blends when you when you move around it, it kind of changes colors. Like if you move to this side, you know, you can kind of start seeing the tops and then it flows down because it's a different color. So it kind of blends as it goes down so that when you kind of look at it from this angle going down, it looks like it's just painted solid because you can't really see the faces of it. But when you step back, this it's got that varying colors and stuff like that. So I just thought that was, you know, kind of cool, but I'm still not completely finished. I still want to keep, keep kind of messing with it because I want it to have that beachy, you know, kind of washed out look. And I have this wood stain from Rust-Oleum. It's called Mineral Green. And it, in the base of it's a gray kind of whitish color, but it has a tint of green in it which I think would look neat with the blues and I did a little test sample of it and what it does is because it has the appearance of being dry brushed right now and when you take a rag and you kind of just really rub that stain in it kind of blends that brush stroke in it and it just kind of it gives it like a illusion of there being layers I guess where there's some because it doesn't absorb equally everywhere and it leaves some a little more bluer and some a little bit kind of like grayish, greenish, whitish. And I just think it looks really neat. So I'm going to start putting that on. All right, so I'm done with all the painting. I have one last step to do, and that is to put some kind of finish on it, a clear coat. And what I plan on using is this polycrylic, and I have it in gloss because with this being like a water kind of theme I guess I want it to have like a really shimmery shiny just wet look and gloss will give you that so I'm just gonna probably end up putting two coats on this all right so I just put that first coat of gloss clear coat on and it's looking good I just want to put one more coat on it before I do that I just want to lightly sand it with this 320 grit sandpaper which is really ultra fine sandpaper I'll put that second coat on and that should be it for this project all right, so I'm done with this project. I think it turned out cool. I think it was a good choice to go with this blue gradient. I, like I mentioned, there was a lot of different options I could have went with, but with this going into a kid's room, I think it just looks neat, you know, and colorful and kind of actually funky. You know, it's not for everybody. Some people don't aren't gonna like this and some people don't like it. They didn't even like the waves cut into it, but you know, I just think it's something neat, something creative. And that's what it was about for me. It was just coming up with something really kind of outside the box and creative and just having fun with it so I, I did have fun on this project oh and to, i got a lot of questions about it not having any pull it's funny because this my project got shared on this other page and people were like man that thing sucks you can't even use that thing because it ain't even got no handles on it oh no it doesn't have handles where can i grab oh no oh no you know, I had the idea, I planned on using rope as kind of pulls, but once I got it all together, it, it doesn't need any. It has, you know, hundreds of pulls going down the whole thing. It just, you know, you don't, it doesn't need it. All right, guys, so as always, I appreciate the support. I appreciate you guys watching my videos. I, that's why I make them for you guys, so you can watch them and, you know, get ideas and be creative and things like that. So I really appreciate it that you take the time out of your day to watch my videos. The biggest way to be able to help me is to share my videos and just get it out there. Let it be known about Beach Bum Living, you know, share it on your Facebook page or like it, like the videos or come over to my Facebook page and check that out or follow me on Instagram, stuff like that. Little things like that is what keeps me motivated to make these videos for you guys. So I appreciate all that and just keep up the good work.